now July 2020, which means it's already been two years since I took my last steps. Last year, we made a video all about how Craig was paralysed, and we've made the first ever video for this YouTube channel on the day that Craig left rehab and returned home. But we've never talked about those six months in between when Craig was recovering from his spinal cord injury. So in this video, we're going to be talking all about the rehabilitation and physiotherapy that I received after my spinal cord injury. Craig was first taken to Southampton General Hospital, which is the closest major trauma hospital to where he had his accident. He underwent some surgery where he had metal rods placed into his back to help stabilise his spine. And he was in the ICU for about a week and a half after this in intensive care. So while my wound was healing, I had to stay quite still, not able to move and lay flat on my back for days on end. So I was just staring at the same old boring ceiling. So we ended up getting these cool mirror glasses, which allowed me to look down my body and around the room. Now these were so great that we actually ended up giving them to another spinal cord injury patient when we left the hospital. Once Craig's wound had healed enough, he was able to be moved up to the spinal ward and he was here for about another week and a half or so. While he was here, this is where he first started very early stages of physio, which mostly involved learning how to try and sit up again. Now this sounds like it should be easy, but after my spinal cord injury, every time I tried to sit up, my blood pressure would just plummet and I'd get really lightheaded and feel like I was going to pass out. All right. <laughs> About three weeks after his accident, Craig was stable enough to move on. At this point, he would have normally gone on to a specialist spinal cord injury rehab centre. However, this year was so busy in terms of the number of people having spinal cord injuries that there was no space in any of these centres. So instead, he ended up moving to Luton Hospital, which is a smaller hospital. He wasn't able to stay in Southampton Hospital any longer because it is a major trauma hospital and they had to clear the beds for other patients. So while I was at Luton Hospital, I continued my physiotherapy and managed to crack sitting up. In order to do this, I needed to use an abdominal binder and I needed to take a drug called ephedrine to help manage my blood pressure. Once Craig was able to set up, he was then able to go into a wheelchair for the first time. Now this was great, even though it was a big clunky thing, I was able to get out of the ward and actually go outside for the first time since my accident, um, which is really nice just to get some fresh air. After about a month in Luton Hospital, a space opened up in a neurological rehab centre. Now a neurological rehab centre wasn't perfect for someone with a spinal cord injury, but it was a little bit more specialised than the local hospital. So it was a good temporary measure while the waiting list for the actual spinal cord injury rehab center was cleared. Here at this new rehab center, I had an hour of physiotherapy every day, which was a huge step up. And they also let me borrow a wheelchair, which was so much better than the one I had been using. I started off mastering basic bed mobility, sitting up, moving around and rolling over, and then moved on to more advanced things such as basic slide board transfers. He was also able to have a daily session of occupational therapy which involved learning how to do stuff such as how to get dressed independently. The nice thing about this rehab centre is they had a lot of specialised equipment. So I was able to stand for the first time using a powered standing frame and I was also able to use an FES bike which used electrical stimulation to move my leg muscles so I was able to pedal the bike by myself. Up until this point Craig had been using an indwelling catheter but while he was at this rehab centre he was able to try out intermittent catheterisation for the first time and also learn how to do his own bowel care. I also had access to a regular shower, which was a huge improvement, because up until this point, I'd only been able to wash myself on the bed. By the time Craig moved to this rehab centre, his medical needs were very low. Because the occupational therapy and physiotherapy sessions were only during the week, it meant that on the weekends, we were able to go out into the local town or go to the local restaurant, which was so nice after having been in a hospital setting for so long. After about a month at this rehab centre, and about three months total after my accident, a space finally opened up at Stoke Mandeville, which is the spinal rehab centre that I went to. Stoke Mandeville really was the turning point for Craig's recovery. He spent about three months in total doing rehab there, and this is where real progress was made. The physio and rehab at Stoke Mandeville was really intense. It was essentially a full-on 9-5 to five timetable, which, compared to what I had been doing before, which was at most two hours a day, it was a huge step up. A big part of the physio that Craig did at Stoke Mandeville was mastering transfers. So this went from using a sliding board to learning how to do all the transfers independently and eventually working towards doing the floor to wheelchair transfer, which was considered to be the holy grail of transfers. The other nice thing about Stoke Mandeville is they had a fully kitted out spinal gym, which you could use at any time during the day. Now this was nice because between sessions I would go in there and work on things like strength building on their adaptive equipment and also working on things like standing. 
Now standing was quite difficult for me. It was the same as when I first started sitting up. My blood pressure would drop and I'd feel really faint like I was gonna pass out. But with a bit of perseverance and using an orthotic corset, I finally managed to crack in. While at Stoke Mandeville, we were able to try out a whole host of different sports, including hand cycling, wheelchair basketball, wheelchair rugby, wheelchair tennis, badminton and table tennis. And this was such an important thing for us because it was the first time we realised it was still possible to do fun things from a wheelchair. And I was also able to get involved in the sports as well. So not only was Craig doing something fun, but we were able to do something fun together, which was a huge factor for us in accepting Craig's injury. Stoke Mandeville also has its own hydrotherapy swimming pool, which I got to use about once a week. It was really nice to get out of the wheelchair and just rely on my own body to move around. I love being in the water with no mobility aids, as it just makes me feel a lot less disabled. Stoke Mandeville had a big selection of wheelchairs that you were able to borrow for up to a week and try out a few different types. This was the first time that Craig had been in a lightweight active wheelchair and this was such a huge change from the wheelchairs Craig had been in before because they are so much more manoeuvrable and agile. They were really keen for you to master as many wheelchair skills as possible because although it would be really nice to have a perfectly accessible world, in reality it's really not. They teach skills such as how to do wheelies, how to go up and down curbs and even how to go downstairs in your wheelchair so that you could be as prepared as possible to overcome any obstacles you might encounter out in the real world. I also had the opportunity to try out a wide range of different wheelchair equipment. External companies would come into Stoke Mandeville and demonstrate their equipment to a big group of the patients, which was nice. Some of the equipment was quite good and some of it was a bit underwhelming, but it was good to get a feel for what was out there and what I may want once I left rehab. Craig only had rehab and physiotherapy on Monday to Friday, so the weekends were free. At Stoke Mandeville, they were really keen to encourage you to go home and stay overnight if possible so that you could get a feel for being back at home again and so it wouldn't be a huge shock to the system when you eventually leave rehab. The physical side of rehab at Stoke Mandeville was excellent, but it wasn't the only thing we worked on. With the doctors and the nurses on the wards, we worked on things such as bladder and bowel management. I had the opportunity to try out lots of different types of catheters and different bowel management systems and finally managed to figure out the ones which worked best for me. One of the best things about being at a specialist spinal cord injury rehab centre was that we got to meet a lot of other people with spinal cord injuries and their family and friends. It was so great to meet other people who were going through exactly the same situation that we were. The doctors and nurses and other staff at the hospital are great and they're all experts, but they can't really understand what it's like to live with a spinal cord injury. So it was really nice to interact with all these other people. And actually, I ended up learning almost as much from the other patients at the hospital as I did from the staff themselves. Craig spent three months at Stoke Mandeville and six months in total after his accident he was able to leave rehab and return home. And the day that Craig left rehab was actually the day that we filmed our very first video for this YouTube channel. So for those of you that have been with us through this from the start, you'll know exactly what has happened since then. And for those of you that haven't been with us, feel free to go back and check out those early videos now. But beware, those early ones are a little bit cringy. So I hope you found that video useful and if you did, please give it a like and share it so other people can find it. If you've got any questions or comments at all, feel free to leave them down below and we'll do our best to get back to you. Thank you for watching, see you next time, bye bye.